Wireless headphones are not new. I remember my uncle having some wireless headphones back years ago when I was a much younger man, 15 or more years ago. And Bose, who are a manufacturer, are famous for a lot of things, but definitely famous for their wireless headphones. And I think they released their first wireless Quiet Comfort 25 headphones back in 2014. So it does feel weird to sit here and say that I feel products like the Mark Levinson 5909 wireless headphones are going to be responsible for starting a new high-end headphone revolution. Because I think with wireless headphones, up until very recently, the convenience of them came at quite a big cost to sound quality, especially compared to equivalent, maybe priced, passive or wired headphones. But I'm really not sure that's the case anymore. I think before we go any further with this review, it's really important to you know, state the facts that today, which is November 2022, all of the codecs that you'll use from your phone or your, your tablet devices, all of the codecs that will send music or any information really to Bluetooth wireless headphones, they are all lossy. Even Sony's latest and greatest LDAC codec, which I think it gives the highest bit rates or data rates, it's still lossy compared to CD quality. And that's before we even start to think about all of the high resolution music that's available today. And I think that means that, you know, the concept of a high end Bluetooth headphone seems quite a difficult sell. And I'm not really sure what's changed over the maybe the last year or two. I think it must be microchip technology that's allowing for, you know, wireless Bluetooth headphones to start to sound as good as they are even considering you know, the formats that we are using are lossy. And that's especially important when we start to look at the price tags that are being asked for these Bluetooth headphones. And that's especially true in the case of the Mark Levinson 5909 because they come with a hefty price tag of 999 pounds. And that of course seems like a lot of money for a Bluetooth type of headphone system. But when we look at the headphone market in general, a thousand pounds is only really kind of middling. And then we have to consider what has to go in a headphone system like this. It has to have DACs, it has to have amplifiers, it has to have DSP, wireless technology, and also a phone app support. So the £999 price tag, or I suppose the build cost to, to make that a retail price, has to cover a hell of a lot more things than a passive or a wired headphone system will. And I think you can see that a little bit in the build quality of the 5909, but I definitely don't want to start on a negative. I actually want to start on the big positive for these headphones, and that is their sound quality. These are easily the best wireless Bluetooth headphones I've ever listened to. And they are exceptional actually in terms of sound quality when you factor in everything. But there are two new kids on the block, the Focal Bathys and the Bowers & Wilkins PX8. And I have briefly listened to the Bowers & Wilkins PX8 and I would say they probably wouldn't best the Mark Levinson, but of course I'd have to have them side by side for any real comparison. But what's interesting is the price differences. So the Mark Levinson cost 200 pounds more than the Focal Bathys and nearly 300 pounds more than the Bowers & Wilkins. And that is a very considerable price increase over the two main competitors. But coming back to the Levinson, the reason why I think they sound like the best of their kind to me at least, is for a simple reason that I can surmise in one word, refinement. Their delivery of sound in all areas, from bass through to treble, but particularly in the vocals and the mid-range, is controlled, it's composed, it's smooth, it's, it's refined, it's, it's detailed, articulate, ultra-composed, Nothing stands out, there's no real key negative area, everything's just so evenly balanced and smoothly delivered. And you wouldn't think that just that, just that one characteristic alone would stand out that much, but it really does when I compared to what I think is a very good wireless headphone system, the Apple AirPods Max. But after this comparison, the Apple didn't sound as good to me anymore. 
they lack the same composure, smoothness, and just c control of sound compared to the Mark Levinson, and the Apple actually sound really quite edgy by comparison. And yes, the Apple do sound really quite fun at first, and I'd really like actually how upfront they sound, but they can become tiring to listen to because they just lack that refinement. And it is interesting listening to these two headphones and, and kind of comparing them and listening to the difference because there is a really stark difference, obviously in terms of just the design, in terms of the intended sound, but the quality of the Levinson, the refinement of their sound, you'll find yourself being just drawn in, more in, more in. Whereas the lively, more upfront sound of the Apple, uh, yeah, it draws you into a point, but it also holds you off. And these do sound really quite edgy in pretty much every regard, really, especially compared to Levinson's, they're just so smooth and so composed. Considering 99% of the listening I've been doing is with Apple devices, so I've been feeding these really good quality headphones a very lossy signal. But you know what? You don't really notice it. Yes, you can maybe hear it a little bit, but it's really not obvious that you're sending these a very, very low bitrate signal. But the Mark Levinson do support Sony's latest LDAC codec. And I use them with my partner's Oppo phone at the maximum LDAC data rate. And I heard some promise of the better sound that LDAC can offer, but not so much to make me go wow. And the usability of the Oppo phone made me hate the experience and much prefer using the iPhone and iPad. And this is definitely not an Apple fanboy thing, far from it, actually. But what I found with the Oppo phone, when I engaged the LDAC codec, it seemed to upsample whatever the native content was, up to 96 kilohertz. And I don't know why it was doing that, but it seemed to be doing that all the time. And what I found was when that was happening, it was just thickening the sound a little bit too much. And that was robbing the 5909 of some of their great sonic strengths, their clarity and their articulation and composure. It was just thickening the sound too much. Now in the developer options, you can change a whole host of things in the Oppo phone. So I was able to select the native sample rate of the music and that's definitely when the Mark Levinson sounded the best. It sounded the richest and also the cleanest, that the clean part was the bit that was missing. But that meant as I was streaming through different music on Cobars, I constantly had to keep going into the settings to change to the native sample rate of the music. That is just not a solution that worked for me beyond a point of testing. So I actually found, going back to my Apple devices, obviously you don't have to think about any of that. And the sound quality difference really wasn't enough. There wasn't enough of a loss to make me think, oh, that I'll go through the pain of the, the Oppo situation. In fact, I might have even preferred the sound using the Apple devices, iPad Pro and an iPhone over the Oppo solution anyway. So I think this is just one of those situations. It's great news if you're an Apple user, you don't need to use the LDAC codec to get really good sound out of the 5909. Obviously, if you're an Android user, you don't have to worry about it either, but it's, this, this is good news if you are an Apple user. But there definitely is one aspect of the Apple's sound quality which I preferred to the Mark Levinson is that is the vocals delivery. I just like the Apple's upfront character. They bring vocals more to the front, more to the center of the soundstage and just make them more present, especially at lower volumes. I think that's because the Apples do some kind of sound processing to manage the sound at the different volumes that you listen at. But the Apple's sound process. They sound like there's a computer kind of behind the, the, the headphones making them sound a certain way. You don't get that with the Levinson's. The Levinson's sound more smooth, more composed, maybe more analog. <laughs> I hate to use that uh, analogy, but that would be a good one actually to describe this difference. But one of the biggest strengths, and then I suppose maybe the biggest drawbacks of the sound character of the 5909 is that they are so composed, they borderline sometimes on being too reserved. And I definitely noticed this at more quiet, well, at more lower volumes and definitely with certain types of music. And that just meant that I was turning the volume up noticeably more on the 5909 compared to the Apples, just to get the same level of kind of immediacy and excitement from them. And they definitely can deliver it, but it means the volume has to be quite a bit higher. And this is not a problem because the 5909 stay very composed regardless of the volume, but it's just kind of one of those situations. You know, the very composed sound just can make music just be a little bit standoffish. And I think what I noticed was 
when I was critically listening to music, if I wasn't actively focusing on the music and listening to things that were happening, I found because they can be so relaxed and relaxed is not the right word because they're so kind of composed and a little bit standoffish. If you're not paying attention, music can just become more of a backing entity to maybe what you're concentrating on or what you're focusing on. And maybe that is partly by design because these are obviously a portable product, right? So maybe you're not supposed to be always critically listening to your music when you're walking on the streets or whatever. But when I am critically listening to music, I like it to be, you know, there, I like it to be a bit more present. And I think within the vocals and the overall presentation, the apples do that one little bit a bit better. But unfortunately, because the refinement isn't there, I would still take the Levinson's over the apples all day of the week. And that brings me on to an area that I would like to see improved. Now, Mark Levinson do have their own dedicated app. And within the app, we have different noise cancelling options, standard stuff really, but also some sound tailoring modes, but only for the bass. And for me, the bass from the 5909 is tight, it's punchy, it's really controlled, and it's damn impressive. The bass from this is really impressive for its quality, its control, its articulation. And when you turn them up quite a bit, it can be really quite driving and punchy. It really is one of their standout strengths, which is especially impressive considering the files that I was sending to them are very compressed. But some of the time I wanted just a little more bass. Now within the Mark Levinson app, there is the option to engage a bass lift. And I think this sounded better in ways, but I found depending on whether I had noise cancelling on too, or if the volume was just up quite loud, the way the DSP or EQ has been designed, it was just thickening the sound to the point where the 5909 would lose that special character for their bass, that control, that articulation, and the quality of that, this is the way that the definition, the definition of the bass. So I got a little bit frustrated with the bass lift option within the app because I liked some of it, but didn't like all of it. And I found that a little bit frustrating because, because I wanted to use it, but couldn't use it. And I think it would be so much better if maybe the app DSP, the EQ that's being applied was done differently, or maybe better still would be the option to engage it incrementally, so in small amounts. Because that way, I think the user would be able to fine tune that little bit extra bass for them, maybe for certain types of musics, maybe for different volume levels, or just maybe for, for personal taste. I would say the noise cancelling of the Levinson's is pretty much on par with the Apple's. I think the Apple is more aggressive, so I think it kind of reduces the external sound more than the Levinson, but you know, it's nitpicky and I think the difference is between these. But there is one, major difference that I experienced. I actually think the Apples sound significantly better when you engage noise cancelling with them. They just sound clearer and yeah, their sound stage sharpens up some. Whereas with the Levinson, I actually think they sounded better with the noise cancelling off. But this particular review sample, I was issuing, I was experiencing, sorry, a couple of issues. If I put the earphones on and kind of move my jaw or move my head around a little bit too much, I could feel there was like a bit of a pressure kind of sound, some weird kind of something going on with the noise cancelling on, which wasn't happening with noise cancelling off. So I spoke to another reviewer friend who's had a pair of these to look at and they didn't experience anything even remotely similar to that. They said that the noise cancelling and the headphones were perfect. So for me, it's got to be something that I've just experienced with this particular review sample. But I think for transparency and awareness reasons, excuse the pun, it's important to mention it. Moving on to what's got to be probably the most important, but definitely the second most important thing with a set of headphones, and that is their comfort. And this really is where the 5909, the Levinson's absolutely destroy the Apple. And that is with these ear pads, because these ear pads really are plush. They really feel soft and comfortable. When you put the headphones on, oh, the quality of these really stand out. Because when you compare that to the Apple's ear pads, these ear cushions, that are really soft, really, they feel quite thin. They've always felt very flin and flimsy to me. And when you put them on, they're okay. But, but that kind of soft padding aspect that the Levinsons especially give you is to me totally missing. So these have always felt 
a little bit cheap to me on the apples, which is insulting in a way because these are not cheap to replace at £70 a set. It's a ridiculous price, actually, I think, for these. When you wear the Levinsons for an extended period of time, excuse me if I'm shouting because <laughs> the way these cancel sound on their own, they're passive. Noise cancelling is really impressive. When you wear these for a long period of time, yes, you do get hot, your ears do get hot and a little bit sweaty. But interestingly, I think because it's leather, as opposed to the apples, which are material, the apples really take on the sweat, hold that sweat, and they can start to stink over time. Anybody that's used these in the gym will be able to testament to this. Do a Google search, you'll realize people have really struggled with these, whereas you don't get any of that with the Levinson's ear pads. And I think the Levinson's ear pads, they're not at the same kind of big comfy cushion level as something like a big Audisy headphones. Those are really, really lovely in terms of plush and comfort and quality, but these are more at that kind of level. So definitely be fitting a headphone of a higher price tag. Their clamping force is about absolutely perfect based on how light they are, because they really are light. And then it's just easy, you put them on, you don't even think about their comfort anymore. Whereas with the Apple, I was, well, especially when I first got them, I was fiddling, I was fiddling. I really struggled to find, you know, a, 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 a nice comfortable fit. The Mark Levinson are large and bulky. I'm guessing it's a function over form design. Whereas the Apples are very sleek by comparison. And if you had some hair, especially long hair, I think you could easily hide the Apples. Whereas you're never going to be able to hide the Levinsons. And for me, they are definitely too big and too bulky for a daily work commute use. And I am the least vain person around. But for a plane, a long train journey, or that kind of travel, of course, I would use them all the time, no problems at all. So to sum things up, do I think the Mark Levinson are perfect? No. But do I want some? Hell yes. Do I think they are better than the apples? Yes. In nearly every area? Definitely yes. So the big question is, do I think they are worth double the price of the Apple AirPods Max or do I think they are worth the £999 high for a Bluetooth headphone price tag? Tough one this and it's definitely not an unequivocal yes because sound quality is definitely a yes. Build quality in the main is definitely a yes. Flexibility is definitely a yes. But I do have some niggles with them. They're more nitpick niggles, but they are slight frustrations. And whenever something's kind of flying the flag as the best or most premium product, you hope that it's going to be perfect. And these are definitely not perfect. Maybe expectations are too high to expect perfection. But what I've found really very interesting since these have been here, for a number of weeks now, I've not for once wanted to go back and use the AirPods Max, apart from obviously doing testing. I've used these exclusively, used these for a whole variety of different things and <laughs> enjoyed every single second of it really. These are really very, really very impressive headphones. They've impressed me no end. So I think in that vein, yeah, of course I can say they justify the £999 price tag. But the only reason I have some hesitation is because of the two newcomers, the Focal Bathys, the Bowers PX8, because I don't know how close they'll be to these, obviously for considerably less money. But as it stands today, the Mark Levinson 5909 are easily the best Bluetooth headphones that I have tried and listened to to date. And it's been a real pleasure to spend some time with these. And I think what's great about this is that they've set the standard bar really very high. And what that means is, <laughs> it means great things for the future of Bluetooth wireless headphone quality and sound quality. And that really excites me. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope you found it useful and helpful. If you like my take on audio in general, definitely on headphones, then maybe subscribe to the channel. And if you've enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.